Greetings, everybody, from around our beautiful blue planet Earth. Welcome to our global wisdom call today. And uh, we have an outstanding theme and guests today. Before I get to that, though, I want to welcome in uh, from uh, around the planet, various people, and you can go down to the bottom of your screen and click on chat. And if I need help from Dan Gaucher, our tech person here will will do that. And Dan, uh, see if you can bring uh, Kathy Mines in from Canada. And while Dan's working on bringing her in, I just want to welcome Kathy as our uh, person who's going to facilitate our chat box today. Okay, hi, Kathy. Yay, hi, everybody. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for being here with us today from Canada. We love, we love being with you. I wish we could see you. Well, I see you guys and you look fabulous. Oh, good, good. <laughs> So I'm seeing Joanne Cleary uh, from Canada. I'm seeing Amy Blumenshine from Minneapolis. I'm seeing Raina from Arizona. Oh, that's beautiful. Armaya from here uh, in our area. So I, I just want to encourage all of you uh, to comment and ask questions. And we we actually can't, when we send out this, with this video and recording, we'll have four or 500 people beyond the people who are here with us today who will be listening to this. And they always comment on this chat box and, and, and the ability that so many of you show in expressing yourself. So thank you so much for being here in this particular setting with us today. And I feel like we're holding hands in a way, in a, in a council uh, of um, wisdom seekers as we seek to be inside the wisdom of Mother Earth. And we're all a part of Mother Earth here, so we have a certain kind of wisdom just because we're inside the bosom of Mother Earth. So I'll, I'll be introducing uh, the theme and we'll begin to, to get into Jacob's well and this wonderful water resource here in just a few moments. I'm going to ask Judith uh, if you'll focus us today with a song that relates to water. Hi everybody, so happy to be here, so happy to share this time with you all on this monthly wonderful call and gatherings. The river is flowing, flowing and growing. The river is flowing down to the sea. Mother, carry me, your child I will always be. Mother, carry me down to the sea. Oh. Okay, thank you so much, Judith. Mm -hmm. And the river is flowing, and in a moment we'll we'll flow with the river a little bit. Uh, we're we're here at uh, Jacob's Well, and we're sponsored today with a partner of the Center for Engaged Ecology, which uh, has one of its uh, expressions in Jacob's Well, but also is expressed throughout the planet. And uh, wow, I just saw Yulia Antonova from the Ukraine who came in and made a comment. So we welcome those of you from the Ukraine who are connecting with us today. So um, with me today, you can see David Baker and some of his work behind us. Uh, we're, David is, besides being a, a close friend and ally, in this beautiful valley where we live, the Wimberley River Valley. David is uh, an artist par excellence and uh, has a powerful side of himself that is an environmental activist and is something that I think is just what's needed for planet Earth today. That is bringing together transformative 
art to water our souls. And later on, we'll have Alan Baker um, and Alan Adams, who will also uh, work with us in opening up some of the acupressure points so that we can allow some of this water, this energy to flow through us, which is what we need, or at least what I need, and, and maybe what some of you need. So I want to bring David in now, and uh, David's going to take us on a little bit of a journey into Jacob's Well and, and speak from his heart as an artist and as an environmental activist. Thanks, Will. And thanks, thank you, Judith and Dan and everybody listening for being here this morning. And um, yeah, this, this place, Jacob's Well, has been you know, central to my life really for the last 30 years. In the late 80s, uh, I came to Wimberley and was able to, to live here at the well and, and recognized what a sacred, special place it was and what deep wisdom nature was expressing through the, um, through this, this is the painting of, of, of the well here in the creek. And this was a, a painting I did in the early 90s, started on in the 90s. And um, part of me doesn't feel like it's, com it's complete, but it was, it was a result of me just spending time on the land, listening to the earth itself, listening to the trees and the rocks and the, the birds and the, and the fish and the creatures that were here. And, and and the ancestors that had been here long before us. And um, this was my attempt to sort of uh, go inside myself and express what I was hearing and what was coming through. And so uh, um, I thought it would be interesting this morning to start with a little journey into the well itself. And um, there are scuba divers that have gone now over a mile and a half back into the caverns there at the well. Um, back at 20, 25 years ago, many, many divers actually have lost their life in there. So um, if you have a little bit of claustrophobia, um, I apologize in advance for looking at this, but I think the, the idea uh, is to sort of see that the earth is this living entity this Gaia, this, this, there is a life force that's coming from the earth and flowing out of, of places like Jacob's Well and Springs all over the world that is nurturing us not only through the water, but just through the act of, of, of giving, of creating constantly. And that, as an artist, to come to the well, literally, and to see um, and to experience this welling up this rising of water out of the earth was deeply uh, moving to me and, and it ultimately inspired me to become an advocate and to work to protect and, and to buy up this land and, and create a preserve. And still to this day, I'm, I'm working to um, try to really, um, I think, be a good steward of this place, but also learn uh, from the lessons that the earth is teaching us here. Yeah, that's a picture of Jacob's Well looking downstream. Um, and there's another shot of, uh, I think that's Joe Nick Potoski actually jumping in there, local, local wonderful rider. Um, a shot of the clouds reflected there. And um, this, is, this is a shot that was done during the recent uh, meteor shower uh, time, time lapse and see the the meteors there. Um, so uh, yeah, this was the very first painting that I did at Jacob's Well. And uh, it was it was a painting of what I sensed was happening there, this this movement up, this rising up of energy. And uh, I I called this painting the name the nameless one. Um, because it, it was such a mystery, such a mystery where this water is coming from, where what's animating this force that's that's rising up and and that's providing this this life giving water to us. So just pause there a moment, David. Mm -hmm. I just want to invite everybody to 
allow yourself to let the sacred energy that David is speaking about to kind of come up from inside you as he continues to speak. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is the painting that's, that's right behind us. And uh, uh, this, as I said, was painted in the early 90s and sort of depicts Jacob's Well, the, the creek, the, the creatures, the, the fish, the turtles, and the sweat lodge that uh, just two weeks ago, the Earth Tribe had a sweat lodge here. We had a sweat that was really the, the way we heard that we were supposed to really buy this land and be here was, was through uh, participating in the sweat lodge. Back then, I didn't know about the aquifer, and I sort of imagined that it was coming from this kind of magical place down underneath the earth. And uh, uh, you know, this is the the uh, the rocks on the cliff that were the, the ancient sea creatures that were here when this was a uh, a sea a hundred million years ago. I imagine the the Native Americans and, and the uh, indigenous people that that came and would counsel here and, and spend time around the well. Um, this sort of represents the development that's up above the well, the people moving in uh, and the, the ancient spirits that were, um, in, uh, were in residence and maybe still in residence here. So there's a lot of uh, symbology, the, the uh, uh, the blue heron that comes and visits and is sort of this meditator in the creek and mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot a lot going on here and, and to me it seems like this this painting is is living it's it's a it's telling a story still it's evolving and I'm I'm open to learn more from the land as as uh, as we you know spend time here. This is another painting that is a little more recent painting. took took about three years to create. That was um, when I when I paint like this, I, I I'm really not thinking about what I'm painting. I'm just going inside. I'm listening, and I'm starting to make marks. And eventually, something starts to emerge that that tells a story to me. And I. Uh, in a way, I'm bringing my unconscious mind out uh, so that I can I can see maybe what's happening inside my my uh, my soul. And um, this painting was very interesting because these are these two bears. My uh, uh, Indian name is uh, or or Native American name that was given to me by uh, Casey Camp Hornick was uh, Little Bear. And this was the father bear, the son, and then there was the son sort of running, you know, wanting to get to move into life, move away from uh, the restrictions. And he was running towards this, what he thought was a turtle, and he fell inside the turtle. It was actually a portal. Mm. And then he came out of the vortex, and then he was the, he was the father. Mm. And so it, it, it and I, I didn't plan that. I just one day said, oh, wow, there's a story there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this, this sense that the Aboriginal, uh, especially the Australian Aboriginals have of, that their ancestors live in the trees, live in, in that rock. There are stories that, that connect them to their ancestors. That, um, that sort of cosmology, that, that that really was uh, fascinating to me, and and I'm I'm just I'm trying to access that language when I when I start to make these marks. I'm really trying to listen inwardly, um, and and then bring that bring that out through the art. Um, another sort of a portal, if you will, a mandala. This uh, this is a, not the Buddha, but. Actually, this was in process. As you can see, now this is all filled with white dots everywhere, but uh, the actual actual painting. But um, it's a meditation for me. Making each of these marks is uh, is is really uh, you know kind of lets me know where I'm at.
So let me pause there just for a second and say how uh, much of a synchronicity it is that you're showing these paintings. Of course, I didn't know which paintings you were going to You probably don't know. I don't either. know either. <laughs> I, I, I'm just, just panning through my, uh, through my so, files. There. So uh, backing up to the Buddha, in September, David and Ellen are going to be here with us as a part of this uh, council or conference or intensive for creating a new civilization. And we're going to uh, use Buddha as a guide and Einstein as a guide and Quanah Parker as a guide. And today, when I um, was coming over here, I uh, reached up in, among my different uh, amulets that I had for a guidance today, and I'll just show you that that I I brought here this this uh, uh, grizzly bear called claw, and in many ways we are indebted to the bear clan in different ways, but also uh, my my uh, relative bear heart, and and this was given to me. Uh, some time ago. So so we have the bear and we have Buddha and we have the paintings that are emerging. You're telling us about your transformation. And in the telling of your transformation, we're being transformed. I'm being transformed. We're being transformed as we participate. So go ahead. Well, um, and I'd like to really be able to find this. Uh, let, let's see. I, I think we can talk quite why maybe why I find this. Uh, this underwater footage that I wanted to show. Um, yeah, I think in many ways, living here at the well, living in this field, um, it, you know, I was a hermit artist. I wanted to just live in the woods to raise my kids and have a, uh, you know, a quiet place to do that. But um, the well had different plans for me. <laughs> I, um, I became very, very concerned about the the well, and in 1996, the it, it, it almost stopped flowing, and that's the year we formed the Wimberley Valley Watershed Association, and that organization worked to uh, ultimately purchase all the land. It was slated for development uh, to basically uh, peel up over five acres of impervious cover, restore the land around the well, and ultimately make that a, a public preserve. And that process was, it required me to engage deeply with the community and the people that live here. And these waters that, that flow out of the well and flow downstream through Blue Hole, and through um, the, uh, the Blanco River. And ultimately, all the way down and it back into the aquifer, recharging San Marcos Springs and the, the beautiful Barton Springs, and then ultimately making its way all the way to the sea. Mm -hmm. But uh, these these divers that have gone into the well, let's see if I can share this now. So this this is about about 700 feet into the cavern and. The divers uh, have, they're on, have these little uh, little uh, scooters that they're they're using, and they, as I've said earlier, they, they go have gone over a mile back into the main cavern, and then they found two side tunnels that go for about a thousand feet each. But uh, to me, when I look at look at this, you know, it's obviously you can't see it from the surface, but when when I first saw this. I felt like I was inside of a living creature. I was in, in the veins of the earth. It was the lifeblood of the earth uh, coming through these, these, these caves, these tunnels. And uh, it, it's kind of awe-inspiring to, to think that the, the water, and, and some of this water is very ancient. It's been in there for thousands of years in the aquifer slowly working its way through and then some of it's brand new it, it fell in rainfall a few weeks ago so that metaphor of sort of, of of mixing this this ancient water with this with this water that just fell from the sky 
it's all the same water. It's all connected. It's all going to the ocean. It's, it's going to rain, come back and rain up in the watershed and feed it. But what's happening in the region is that we're, we're, we're taking more from the aquifer than, than is going back in. And so that, um, I think that's our, you know, big challenge. So I want to pause right here for just a moment because we just went on a remarkable journey. And I've, I've been, I've been around here for 25 years. Um, and we came, I came just a little after you did here. So I mean, and that's the first time I've really experienced that. And it felt to me like uh, going into the depths of the, of the womb of the mother. And in another way, it felt like the descent, like a shamanic descent into the earth for uh, a rebirthing. So I, I just want to pause here and invite all of the people from around the world who you, you may not know, you may not even follow too closely what we mean when we say Jacob's well and the blue hole and the springs and so on, but what you can experience is the painting behind you and also how, how, what a remarkable thing it is to enter into the womb of the mother and follow in some ways uh, the birth canal as we come out uh, and experience that. In September, we're going to go down to the well and uh, each one of us is going to have a chance to, to have firsthand contact with some of this how old would you say some of the water is? Well, um, you know, some of the water in, in the uh, in the Trinity is over the lower Trinity is over thirty thousand years old. Middle Trinity is ten thousand years old. Uh, we we had some isotope dating that showed water coming out of Jacob's Well to be over two thousand years old. But there's also water that that fl that falls in the sky and drops in the aquifer and sure. we have a rainfall, it's just minutes or an hour, within a few hours that water comes through. Yeah. So it's, it's a mixing cave. Water's, water is mixing that, that could be thousands of years old with water that has just fallen from the sky. So that's really quite, a, quite an, a statement right there that as we enter the waters imaginally today, as we enter it through the painting, as we enter it through, through the divers we saw, our bodies are absorbing water that just might have fallen a few days ago, but also could be uh, 2,000, 10,000, 30,000 years old, so that our, our skin is absorbing the wisdom uh, of the water itself. And, in just a few moments, we're going to talk with Ellen about about what this might do with our bodies. But let's let's have another painting or two for before we shift away from that. One thing I, I wanted to to show you all was yes, this painting um, I did in the in the early like 1990 91, and it's it's a painting of the the white shaman, which is a a rock paint rock art painting that is in Seminole Canyon in West Texas that is uh, reported to be over between four and five thousand years old right, right. and um, I was just very drawn to this image and and uh, I'm not even sure what when it I happened the painting I think I sold it possibly but but this this image was very very strong for me I later met a man, um, Gary Perez. Gary uh, took the white, the white shaman painting and has been studying it uh, for many, many years. And in one of the interpretations from it was that it was not only a, a depiction of the shamanic journey uh, into the underworld and and i i won't speak to all of the meaning of it but the thing that fascinated me was that he talked that he he thinks that it also represented the great springs barton springs mm -hmm. san marcus comal 
San Antonio, and even Jacob's Well. And he, he uh, his interpretation and, is that the deer went into Jacob's Well and emerged from Longhorn Caverns north of here. Mm -hmm. We see the Medicine Wheel and Leon River. And I was talking to him last night, and I asked him if he would be willing to come and, and do a uh, uh, one of these calls with you in some future time. Oh wow! Yeah. And Gary, Gary, uh, if you look up Gary Perez on on YouTube, you'll see some of his interpretations. But he is he says this is also a calendar, and the calendar is um, is 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 ending in in 2019 and that there will be a solar eclipse in 2023 that will actually pass over this, this line here that is also um, the, the line of the, the winter solstice that passes right over Jacob's Well. Wow. And it's sort of a midpoint between the medicine wheel and um, the, the springs here to the south. So I, I, I found that just amazing, an amazing interpretation whether or not that's that's the, you know accurate, I I think that the way that um, you know these paintings have persisted and this the white shaman story itself has uh, has brought itself forth is is something for us to really uh, learn from and to to realize we're still in that story and that. He is saying that, that this, this, this cycle ends and starts again in 2023. Right, and that really fits with the Taltec and, and also with the Hopi prophecies that we've been talking about in the great books. I, I want to, well, before you remove that, I want to mention that last Sunday I got a call from Australia. And an Australian uh, wise person, woman, by the name of Millie Wanga, had come across uh, some of our work, some of these calls and so on. And she's one of the, the um, chiefs of the Aboriginal Council in Australia. And so the Standing Rock Lakota Sioux had invited her to come to uh, uh, North Dakota for a healing ceremony to heal them from some of the difficulties they've been going through. And so she said, I, I feel uh, drawn to come to Wimberley and sit with you. And I said, well, when are you coming? She said, well, how about September 20th? <laughs> so that, that's, that's the time that we're having this. And I, and I said to her representatives, I said, would you guys like to help create a new civilization or what? <laughs> and so she'll be here. And, and uh, we've invited her at the next Wisdom Call to be a guest. And awesome. so she's going to bring some of her art from Australia that will support this. And one of the things she has an interest in is in this very domain that you're talking right now. And uh, thank you so much for bringing that. I want to shift now a bit uh, over to uh, Ellen. And so if you guys will change, change places. We have uh, Ellen and David's wonderful dog here, who's a beautiful, beautiful creature. Let's see if we can. Get Fletcher on there. Get Fletcher on there. <laughs> say, say hello, Fletcher. Fletcher, look. Look at the screen. Okay. No, it's not going to work. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we've got we got some good uh, ener energy and Fletcher keeping us honest here. So thank you and welcome, Ellen. Ellen and David are a beautiful couple. And uh, Ellen also is not just a, a, an acupuncturist, but a wise person and uh, an environmental activist. And so to begin with, this, this uh, notion of the waters here somehow interacting with our bodies to open us up and, and using the word acupuncture. So not everyone is familiar with acupuncture. So would you say a little bit about yourself and what acupuncture is? 
<clears throat> well, acupuncture is embedded in a in a, med a tradition of medicine, and Eastern medicine is uh, deeply rooted in the earth, the cycles of the earth, the planets, uh, patterns within nature, and sees man as a microcosm of the environment within which he exists. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of conversation about uh, between heaven and earth sits man. Mm -hmm. And so um, the entire tradition that I've spent a decade studying and practicing is uh, very deeply rooted in how people and their systems are inherently connected in natural patterns. And um, when you talk about Eastern medicine, you know, acupuncture is one component. There's herbal medicine, energy medicine. And as you talk about the meridians within the body, you talk about not only the organ systems within, but the rhythms from without the system and um, how the planets move at certain seasons and certain conditions should be uh, treated within certain time frames and, and it's all a very cyclical uh, viewpoint and um, practicing acupuncture is, is such a gift because it's uh, it, for me it's the seed of the unexpected outcome because mm. you are really deeply practicing within something you can't understand with the equipment we're given in this body. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's based on a tradition thousands of years old. Um, and in the East, they, all of that is integrated into the medicine and in the subconscious of how that medicine operates. Mm -hmm. And um, to be a channel for moving that from the subconscious into uh, the physical realm by contacting people and and really um, deeply presencing with them in the process of where they are and allowing all of that to flow through kind of invisibly is, is really is a miracle honestly you know to to have that level of firstly uh, vulnerability of our humanity to show up to that enormity and then to be humble to take part in that process is it's such a gift. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just uh, uh, a novice in terms of, of acupuncture, but I know a little bit about, about acupressure and so on. And so the story that I tell myself is that first humans began to, you know, press on parts of their bodies to get relief from fear, uh, feeling down or some congestion, uh, even serious illnesses and pretty soon they found some patterns mm -hmm. and then along came uh, the invention or the discovery of metals mm -hmm. and they i guess found that that if you use these tiny little needles they conduct the electromagnetic field or through the body that's one yes. aspect of it one, one little <laughs> stream that flows through the body so what we're experiencing today is uh, how the earth herself has her points. And that, let's see how to put it. Do we have something to do with being acupuncture needles in her body? Or is that <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. You know, I, as far as the theories of how acupuncture works and then kind of expounding that into the macrocosm, um, there's lots of theories about how that physiologically works. But mm -hmm. when I work with people, I, I tend to uh, convey that information as saying that we're basically pointing at areas of your body, mm -hmm. bringing your body's attention, maybe not within your awareness, but just within your body's awareness, bringing attention to points so that a new communication can occur. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, a field that's created that your body can return to and know as balance. Mm -hmm. And so from that realm, mm -hmm. if you're seeing us as you know moving along the field of the body of the earth, mm -hmm. how we interact with the earth at certain points and how we interact with each other as we're making contact with the earth certainly creates and the energy creates a field in which the earth has an experience of us and we have an experience of the earth yeah. and um you know how how we um uh, how we access the earth and certainly in powerful places like jacob's well where you're where you have a a well mm. that 
emerges into a spring, that emerges into a stream, that emerges into a river, that emerges into a, you know, a sea or an ocean. Mm -hmm. It's, it's very literal and, and it's very powerful. Right, right. That's a beautiful way of expressing it. And I want to invite all of the participants now just to take a moment and, 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 and drink in they come over here so they can see you, David. <laughs> so, sort of drink in the beauty of this couple uh, and, and, and the sound and the images, uh, Judith's voice, uh, the, the sense of our going in through the imagery into the earth and seeing if you can feel in your body a point of tension that this this movement of beauty, this movement of energy can uh, sometimes called chi or in, in our tribal language called puha and in the Jewish tradition it's called ruha, <laughs> moving through us and, and opening us up and, and see if you can locate, locate that tension and let your shoulders move around a little bit and see if you can sense that uh, sacred energy moving through you a bit so um so i want to come back for just a moment before we go to the chats and the responders and uh just say to the two of you what's this like to to be in this experience today it feels like kind of like what we do uh, every every other week when we meet for our gauge ecology discussions it, it feels very um, free flowing and natural, if you will, always to, to explore this deeper level that's that's underneath the surface of kind of what we show the world. And um, you know, I think for me, the you know, Ellen's Ellen's always healing me. She's mm -hmm. always like working on me. I know. I sense. I she's, know. I know. That's why you were talking. She was touching different. Yeah, it's she, kind of opening she, up a little. She, little, little. She, <laughs> she's my full time acupuncturist. <laughs> so yeah, it's. I think it, it's interesting because the dot the dots are also. Mm -hmm. I'm making these little points these little marks and I kind of feel like the well itself you know my first inclination was well fence it off keep everybody out this is yeah. too special and then I, I heard no people people need this medicine they need to come and they need to, to interact here and connect mm -hmm. and um, that's happening now in a very beautiful way and I think uh, it's I've seen people just be changed by jumping into that water, looking into that water, um, you know, laying down on Ellen's table and opening up their well. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's. I think that's the that's the. I guess the the edge. You know, where um, we heal what what is what is, is really needs the healing yeah well two weeks ago uh, the four of us took um, about 30 or 40 people down to the well and and we we engaged the water in various ways and when one person said when, it, when the water came up and stimulated came across my face and my chest he said it was like the veil opened for just a moment and i could see into the heart of things mm -hmm. And sort of using the water to open up the constricted points so that they loosened up. And if we can just have a tiny little moment like that every once in a while, maybe that's enough. And I think that you know nature has that power. Deep connection with one another has that power, and connecting with art has that power to take you from your mind and your and your senses and your seeing eyes into the eyes that live in your heart. And when you can get there, everything shifts and you shift your whole system from a system of reaction into a system of ease yeah. and connection. And so wow. that's I, li I like that phrase, a system shifting from a, uh, a system of reaction to a sense of ease. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to take that, <laughs> take that with me. Let's just begin by getting your response to this experience that we've had together today. Thank you, Will. And David and Alan, oh my God. as well. And it was so rich from your images, the art, and your explanation. Um, thank you so much. And I really appreciated that journey. Um, Ellen and also Will, together, um, I was wondering too during that, uh, what, if, what is our point and our purpose and do we have anything to do with those energetic points on the earth as we move around? And as I was thinking of that, I was thinking of that through my yoga classes or any other movement classes. Uh, and then I was thinking about sacred geometry and fractals and how perhaps the movement of us humans on the planet is creating these beautiful things. Like I, I was imagining like roses, like as we're moving in yoga and dance and all of that, that we're creating with the energetic patterns that we leave behind in our footprints. I don't know. That's what you inspired me to think about. <laughs> good, good. Thank you, Kathy. And Kathy's coming to us from, from uh, Canada. And yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And it's hot and steamy here right now, just in case anyone's wondering. Yeah, yeah, we got some, we got some of that here as well. Hi, Judith. I hear you. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> You're looking beautiful. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I can't see you, but I can see you in my mind. Ah, <laughs> uh, great. Working with Kathy. Kathy is is uh, seeing if things open up for her to be here in September as well. I want yes. to I want to uh, scroll down. Those of you, if you go down to the bottom of your screen and and click on chat, you can see the wonderful comments that were made. And then uh, uh, Yulia Antonova from that I referenced a, a while ago from um, the Ukraine. Uh, is is has made an interesting comment she said according to buddha we are nothing but emptiness but if there is something but emptiness then it is water okay so this is going to be a big discussion between jim garrison and me in september because according to will at least what buddha means by empty is not nothing uh, in fact uh, emptiness is full of everything and the way to find emptiness is to go into everything, uh, not to avoid it, but to embrace the beauty of it. And we've got that, we've got that today. So thanks for that comment. And that, that'll be something we'll want to explore uh, from time to time. I want to shift over to Raina from uh, Arizona. And as you're bringing Raina in, Raina, I think, is a relatively new uh, participant. Hi, Raina. Hi, how are you? Good, good. You're coming to us from where? I'm here in Chandler, Arizona, about 20 minutes out of Phoenix. Oh, good, good. Well, well give us some of your responses to, to our experience today. Yeah, I was actually just writing a little thing in my in Microsoft Word to, to add to the comments. Um, there's a lot of, uh, being here in the desert, I have a lot of, a large element of fire going on. <laughs> Um, so, uh, just because it's so hot and I'm so far away from the ocean or, uh, body of water that for healing, cause, um, I guess there are some accessible, but I haven't been able, I haven't been exposed to a lot of water except for the swimming pool. But I was thinking of how these elements within me, uh, too much fire has created a lot of, um, some illness in my body some blocks in my body. And uh, I've actually found healing just in the swimming pool. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, you guys are so lucky to have access to that body of water down there. It sure is magical. I can tell by the pictures and I get goosebumps just checking out your videos. Um, but yeah, I guess I would just, I would add um, uh, the sense of elements within my body are out of whack. And so, I'm glad that we're talking a lot about water today, too. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's an element that I need for healing at this time. So, okay. So, so, uh, in your body right now, are you experiencing any tension or a contraction just as you're talking? Absolutely. Yeah. I hold on. I'm a little nervous about today, but you're... I just, I hold on to a lot of things. Um, you know, and I guess I just, I, uh, the word empath is a new word for me. Um, but I, I associate myself and my personality with, with the word empath. And I'm sure you guys are familiar with, with the word. Um, and the empaths pick up on a lot of things. And um, uh, I've been looking for local acupuncturists here in the Valley uh, that will wor work within my budget. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for um, mentioning a little bit about the modalities and used in healing too. Okay. Let's pause for a second. And I wonder, is, is there some point on her body that you would recommend that she could just press a bit? Hi, Raina. <laughs> Hi. I feel, I feel you and I feel the, the heat and kind of the, the contraction and the contraction creates the heat and it, and it can feel kind of overwhelming. Mm. Um, when, we, when we get into that place, there's a lot of uh, tension that gets stuck in the diaphragm, just right kind of below your chest and it makes you breathe shallow. Yes. The first thing I would say is, is to plant your feet on the floor and to breathe into your front and your back body and kind of travel your awareness down into that area of contraction because it's basically cutting you in half. And in Chinese medicine, your fire center is in your upper body and your water center is in your lower body. Mm. You want to connect the water of the kidneys and the fire of the heart so that they're connected and nourishing. And so you can use that awareness to illuminate how you have the water within your body, within your microcosm, to kind of temper the tension that comes with your heart. And what we do is we contract our diaphragm and that makes the room where our heart lives much smaller. And then we can't- Yes, we need to open up, the, open up the heart space a bit with intention too. Because I find that intention, especially within movement, um, you know, and, and, and I need to incorporate a Tai Chi or a movement, um, uh, you know, even dance within my day uh, would help. Um, and, and Will, you know, mentioning a certain point, I would say the point that I would give most attention to would be those points on the bottoms of your feet. Mm -hmm connect up through the interiors of your legs and up towards the center of your body and up through the diaphragm into your chest. So it's yeah. that tension of water and energy coming from the earth, from the bottoms of your feet, up through, like there's a spring that's coming from the back, the center of the earth, yes. and all the way up through your heart. And what you're saying about the breathing, shallow breathing, that's very intuitive of you because um, I realize, I recognize myself doing this. I take a, I sell things on eBay. I sell cactus on eBay and I take a lot of photos and I do this thing where I stop breathing for a second so I can get a shot with, it's just with my camera phone, but it has created these blocks within my heart center as well uh, because of this shallow breathing. <laughs> so I'm becoming more aware of that. But for all of us too, I think there's a lot of healing and just recognizing um, what our body's doing each moment. And I know that can become overwhelming for some, but even just taking time within our day to, to pay attention to our bodies. So thank you. Thank you, Ryan, and thank you for coming in on our call. And, and just uh, picking up on something you said right there, Ellen, something Judith and I do every day before we get out of bed, one of the things we do, we, do so, we do a bed yoga. <laughs> and, yes. As I, get, as I get a little older, I do I do uh, more of that. But but uh, if you if if people will experiment with this and let us know on the chat, um, if you just take your foot and 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 let your fingernails uh, kind of be a, a tapping motion on yes. all over your feet uh, before I ever make contact uh, outside the bed, and and it's really a very we actually picked this up from Judith's mother who lived to be 104. And, okay. and she uh, she taught us how to stimulate the bottom of our feet, and she did Ooh. that only intuitively. Yeah, intuitively. Yeah, yeah. Nice. She she intuitively knew 
how to stimulate different parts of her body uh, in order to open up. Okay, so, uh, oh, I just also would, would make the comment that, uh, let's see, uh, someone commented, uh, Crystal Stein commented to you, Raina, that uh, she pointed out that you spell your name in such a way that maybe you are the rain mm -hmm. itself. So that's a beautiful yes. thought. And I'm a water sign as well. I, in the ocean is, is my love. Uh, it's very weighing on my heart to be here in the desert sometimes, but uh, absolutely. Okay, thank you, Raina. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to you another time. Thank you. Okay, so um, let's see here. Now, um, why, first of all, I just want to say that the chat is full today, and I'm going to mention a couple. Uh, embracing beauty from Amy. Embracing beauty is one of our best spiritual practices, and that is a lot of what we were doing today. Uh, uh, then Valencia says, the God code, blessings with water, love, and light to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, uh, Joanne says, I think our bodies are intrinsically connected to earth. I think that is why we are seeing so many illnesses because the earth too now has experienced unwellness. So as we heal ourselves, perhaps the earth will also begin to heal. Yes, I mean, every we are earth, see? We are aspects of earth. So she's not over there healing herself and we're over here healing ourselves. That everything we've been doing today is earth healing herself and allowing the springs to flow through her veins and and through the beauty of their relationship with david and ellen and and, uh, and through the comments that Raina made and, and so on so i just want to thank everyone for being here with us today and i want to make a few comments heather ash is in mexico and she uh, she um, lost uh, the ability for connection right at the last minute and was going to do some writing. She'll be with us next month. We'll be meeting, gathering next month. Uh, the next time we gather will be July 29th, which is a Saturday, which will be a little bit sooner than we usually gather. And we're hopeful to have at that time Millie Wanga uh, from Australia, a beautiful, beautiful Aboriginal elder. Uh, hope hope that she'll be with us in some way or another. I don't know what to say beyond that. What a pleasure it is for me to be a part of your life and for Judith and Ellen and David, for all of us to kind of informally uh, be able to open up points of con constriction in our body, minds, and soul and allowing the Elan Vital to flow through us and in closing today i'm going to have judith sing something in just a moment but i want to call your attention to a chant that we use in the earth tribe that speaks to the elan vital the mysterium tremendum that flows through us we begin with puha which is a comanche word for the breath of life the wind that flows through us so wherever you are, you can just say the words puha. And then uh, move on to the Andes uh, and our brothers uh, in the Quechua people. And they use the word for the mountain spirit that flows through us. And the word they use is ah pu. It's the other side of puha. And then, and then I mentioned um, um, the Jewish uh, Hebrew word for uh, the east wind that blew across the face of the deep that, that was at the point of creation in their story. Ooh, ah. And then, and then over in Greece, I love this one. Numa. Numa. For the for the energy that flows through us. And so we send all of this energy to you today. And we, in return, embrace the love and energy 
and sacred spirit that you send to us. Okay, I just want to say a little blessing here at the end of this wonderful little gathering and all of you incredible people that joined us today. <clears throat> all I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Tun kasha la, tun kasha la, I look for you in eyes. Tun kasha la, tun kasha la, please open up our hearts. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Okay, everybody. It's a wonderful to counsel with you every month. See you back next month, July 29th.